This is a rig, I mean, a model that I've worked on in my own time. It's been rigged by Brandon. I'm going to show you the topology interacting with a rig because it's really important to understand how these things deform and move. And this model has some errors that I'm gonna to show to you and like why they are errors. And then I'll move on to other models and then talk about some tools that can be used to make things easier. Um, first of all, this model is extremely low poly, as you can see. This is what I used while modeling to make sure I didn't have to move vertices because while you are modeling, you will find yourself moving individual vertices often, which means if you move to high poly before you're really ready to, you're gonna make your life terrible. Like I did with Tiffany, terrible idea, don't do it. Um, but so the, this is a star, one, two, hold on, one, two, three, four, five. You see this? Yeah. That is a star. Stars are not good to have out in the open like this. Um, they tend to make the deformation weird. For example, when I fold the arm of this model, right, it's going to want to bend right here, right? There's no line. So it's going to try and crunch itself. Thankfully, because this model is low poly and I usually, I usually uh, work with it at high poly, and I will show you because this model... Um, uh, nervous curve. I will show you at high poly, this becomes much less of an issue, but it's good to avoid at, at low poly as well. All right, there we go. Load, load. Okay, or crash. Because, oh, bye-bye. Um, <laughs> it goes from low poly to high poly because of the, fa hmm? Thanks, Kyle. This thing? Oh, there we go. Maybe Photoshop too. Okay, so here we go. Yeah, four quit Photoshop is lost. All right. So anyway, as I was saying, I'm going to go ahead and put this on medium quality. That way we can still see the stuff going on. The way this, the reason it is going to high quality and low quality is because um, Brandon Shawl, who rigged this, allowed that functionality. Um, anyway, we, boop. you can see that star is now in a much better position, but you still have this line that's going to want to bend, right? And it will not be able to. It's, it's fine. It looks all right. But do you see what's happening? Pinch. Yeah. Um, so that's why you wouldn't want to have a star there. A much better place for a star is underneath the arm because it's hidden when the arm goes down and there's no pinch. Very much the same way there. You see there's a, there's a star on the back shoulder blade here, which causes a similar problem when smoothed. Um, it's very hard to see right there. Do you see that coming in? Uh, how it's hold on right here. Stars are avoidable. I'm going to tell you guys how to fix those and how to not have them in your models. But this one has model. This one has stars in two. Yes. Can you return um, the mouse? To Lauren? Lauren's back? No. I mean, I will return it when I'm done, yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. It's all good. You have no more responsibility. I got all it. Right. Um, I'll tell you how to, to um, avoid them. Again, it's not as visible in this model because uh, when it's smooth, it's not as apparent. Again, I can go up even, and even one more of these, and it's going to be less apparent than that. Yeah, you see? It's practically gone. Any issue that was there. And this one still persists, as you can see, right there. Um, and because of that, the rigger actually created a control that moves that, that star around so I can fix it if I want to for certain poses. Um, anyway, so that's what a star is. Um, let's go back to chunky chunk. All right, there we go. Um, oh, polygons. Um, something I'm going to talk to you guys about faces. Have you, she talked to you about faces yet? No. Okay, I will not go into faces. Um, otherwise, let me see if there's a Y gun I can show you. Absolutely. Um, so hands are extremely difficult, and these hands are not perfect. I had, to do, I had to lower the polys on this to make it work. As you can see, I have a try. Oopsies. Whoops. Um, this is a Y-gon right here. You see how it's connecting two different rows of polygons, but it's still a quad? Oh, yeah. Those are okay. Y-gons are fine. They're actually very useful in combining things. Um, what you can see here, this hand actually is fully good to go. You see it's very low poly, but... Um, it still it still rolls as a hand because it has a deformation where it needs to have deformation. Um, you see? Yeah, so even though it has low polys per se, it still bends perfectly fine because the divisions are in the right place. Modeling characters is all about having your divisions in the right place. Not necessarily perfect uniformity throughout the model, but correct, um, you know, divisions. You can also see right here, this is a, this is a nice thing to have. You see the knuckle topology right here? Um, for certain hand positions, you can actually bend the knuckle and it will deform properly. But as you can see, I didn't go far enough back, so I have a bump in the hand. Oh, I see. 
Yeah, right. If I make it extreme, you can definitely see it, right? Um, hand topology. I'm going to talk about something called joint patches. This hand actually does not have them for the knuckles, but it does for the knees. Right down here, you see this little topology trick. Um, nerves, curves, there we go. With the one, two, three, four, and then connecting those to this and allowing it to spread out further, that is ideal joint topology. It bends super nicely and works perfectly for anything bendy. It can use, be used for knuckles as well, and for higher poly models, it can be. It, it's usually used for knuckles. It's also on the elbow, I believe. If you look, yep, back here, same thing. This one has six instead of four, which is not ideal, but you know, what are you going to do? Um, I call those joint patches, and they're using a lot of regular topology. Um, so, yeah, joint joint patches, Y-guns, N-guns, and tries, and stars, that's kind of what they all are. Um, as for triangles, did Cheryl tell you no triangles or triangles sparingly? No, no, no triangles. Okay. Um, don't use any triangles in the model you give Cheryl. Triangles are really good. Um, avoid them if at all possible. Sometimes you can. Sometimes you get them in the hair. I think this one has some in the hair, which is not ideal. Again, I have mostly Y-gons and stuff. Uh, triangles sometimes happen. But the good news is, do you guys know what like an edge loop is? Yeah. Okay. Um, do you guys know what the crease tool is? She told, she told both not to because... Yeah. What? Yeah, she actually, we just asked, uh, had this question yesterday in the living. She came in and talked to us about it, and we said it was okay. She came back and told us that you guys would have problems when she never used it. Yep. Okay, I'll talk to Cheryl. Of course, listen to Cheryl, but all of our models for our films have creases. <laughs> uh, this model also has creases. I will explain to you what they are, and again, if Cheryl says no, don't use them. But in your own personal life, it's a godsend. It keeps your edge loops down. Do not add edge loops until you are finished with the shape of your model. I do not care if you want it to be sharp looking. Edge loops are a pain to edit because as soon as you start editing them, they try and crunch together and you get you get bad times. Uh, but what creases do, just mathematically, if you want to know, um, you see how these darker lines are here? Um, that basically, when you smoothen Maya, i.e. you press 3, it's going to calculate the average of the surface and make everything nice and smooth, right? When you tell an edge to crease, it's like, do not include me in the calculation. I want to stay exactly where I am. Ergo, when I do this, all of those edges are going to keep their hardness and be nice and pretty on render. Um, so yeah, creasing. It's nice. But if Cheryl says no, then don't use it. Um, all right, I'm going to show you in Tiffany now. She's not known. I'll show you. Again, your guys aren't talking about faces. So I don't know if Tiffany, talking about Tiffany's face is going to be useful right now. Um, I'll talk about one more thing here. This is a one mesh model. It is one mesh through and through. Because we were working in film, you have no reason to use one mesh. In fact, let's go to Tiffany. Tiffany's a bad time. As in, she's a good time, but she's a lot of meshes together. Do 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 do. Uh, what was the definition for Y-gons again? Um, Y-gons are... Hmm. They're like four-sided polygons, but instead of having, like, instead of looking like a square, they're like triangles. Diamonds. Yeah, kind of like a Triforce shape, sort of. Yeah. Um, so this is Tiffany. Uh, she This model is done to Cheryl's specifications. There are, I think there are no triangles in this model, but it is made of many, many meshes. As you can actually, <laughs> the petals, different meshes all the way around. Uh, pants, different mesh. Little flower things on the bottom, different meshes. Um, her hair is a different mesh. If you have a humanoid character, usually you want the mesh to match the face topology, so it can be point locked, but that's, again, a lesson she hasn't taught you yet, so we'll not talk about that. Tiffany's hands um, have better knuckle, knuckle topology, but they're also pretty nasty. They're not perfect. As you can see, there's more div divisions on some fingers than others. Um, yeah, 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 just nope. Hands are very difficult, especially when you're first learning to model. Obviously, I've done modeled hands like four times now and still haven't gotten it right. Uh... As far as modeling hands go, I'm going to go ahead and open up. Do you guys have any questions about this model before I move into, like, the actual process or no? Okie dokie. I'll make her squat for you. Do do do. All right. There she goes. There she goes. Bring it around town. All right. Anyway. Um, oh, you know what? Something is important. I'm going to open these eye one, one more time just to talk about um, topology for rigging. And I know you guys are not nearly on rigging yet. But thinking about where your joints go in your model and where that topology is is extremely important. Like, for example, in this model, a problem that we came into, um, Brandon, who rigged this, placed the hip joint too high. And do you see the natural deferent? Mm, come on, work. You see where this edge is here? First of all, problem, right? Again, with not being able to d divide there. And then because of that, 
because he placed the hip joint too high, the leg wasn't deforming properly. And even though it's in the right place now, it doesn't have the right space to do it. Remember the joint patch I mentioned earlier, right? Do you see why that's useful for deformation? Yeah. yeah. It's super handy because, you know, you don't have any stretch and you can keep your form. Um, same for shoes. Shoe Tiffany has a major problem. Her feet do not have enough divisions. You see this topology here? That is perfect for um, all kinds of stuff. It's got great deformation. It's good. Tiffany's foot, let, let's go down that road because Cheryl, Darlene was like, put more divisions. And I was like, I can't put more divisions. Um, you can see she has very few when it comes to that direction of her foot. That's, yep, you see? Chunky monkey. Um, so it kind of, you see, it's a little crunchier, right? So that's important. Feet are very important. Shoes are important. Anyway, let's go into actually modeling stuff. Um, I believe right now you guys have a basic body shape, right? So you're really on to quad drawing. All right. I'm going to make a new scene, and I'm just going to go through this with you. Um, how many of you have not finished your basic shape for your character? All right. I got you. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and just go through this really fast and go from a shape to a quad draw. Um, this is going to be Cheryl's method. So as per usual, you know EP Curve Tool on the front view. Mm, great. Curves. All right, you want me to make a man or woman? Sure. All right. All right. Um, you guys know, of course, you can do control. You guys know B to do soft selection? Yeah. Move stuff around, make a nice little pretty lady torso, whatever. How thick does she want to be? All right, she's quite... Th she's three Cs. Gotcha. Um, just so you guys know, modeling thicker characters or, uh, you know, heavier characters is much harder because the riggers have a bad time. All right. Uh, surfaces. Revolve. Oh, no. Whatever will we do? Things are not... Blah, blah, blah. Okay, fixing. Okay. You guys know about all this stuff. You've done it. This is repeat. I'm just making a human body looking thing for you. Do, do, do. Do. Um, modify. Convert. Nerbs to polys. Option box. Quads. I, this is my personal workflow. If she give you other stuff, then... Oh, okay. Live your best life. I got a different method, so... Again, having multiple methods to do something is very important. Cheryl, I learned everything that I'm showing you from Cheryl, and then further exploration, so... Um... Alright. Boom. Tessellate. And I believe this is my mesh. Do -do -do. Edit. Delete all by type. History. Fun fact, never delete all by type history when you're rigging. Don't do it. You will break everything. <laughs> okay, so now I got this. Uh, whoop. Sometimes this happens for no reason. Doesn't, yeah, they are in guns. Uh, They're also weird normals, which means boop. Uh, services. Wait, no. Mesh display. Reverse. Please work. Hello? There you are. All right. Ooh, it's lagging. What's up, Maya? Oh, great. Are you going to let me cut the thing? Hello? Okay. She's she's failing. Spectacularly. I can't do this portion without the cutting tool. Hello? Um, You go to surfaces? Uh, no, sorry. Mesh display, reverse. And then, boom, we're going to be back to having a... Please work. I'm going to restart Maya. Bum -ba -da -da -dun -dun. Let me go, Maya. I will kill you. Yeah, where... How do I kill it? And you throw it out the window. You're right. the top of the apple. Bye bye. Bye bye. Oh, the best part is when it doesn't want to die, even though you're like stabbing it. Is my favorite part of Maya. Um, for some reason, I don't exactly know why the topology issue you just saw occurred. It was probably something I missed in the option box. I was doing it on the computer next to Franco, and it was totally fine. Uh, please. Let me go. Great. Okay. Oh, fun fact, you guys, there's an open recent on this. You know, like Photoshop is at the very bottom of the files menu. It says recent files. Usually you can go there and open something up. Yeah, extremely useful. Yep. 
It also saved as a Maya binary. That's fun. Yeah. Okay. Um. There we go. So the cut mesh tool. Boom. Fixed. You want holes fixed? Boom. Still fit. You don't want to do this often for some reason. I'm having to do this because it's not working properly. But whatever. Um. Please. Having good quads is nice. Always for your torsos. Um. Are you guys retopping the whole body right now, or just part of it? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. For, uh, do the same thing then, please. There we go. Make her a little bit thinner, and let's go ahead and put this soft select. All right, so that's kind of a humanish body shape. Eh. I'm just gonna get something very basic, so I'm not wasting you guys' time. Um, there we go. That's like a human torso-ish thing. Um, so this is probably, you know, you start here and you're like, okay, I gotta add legs, right? How tall you want this? How tall should you be, guys? Very tall. Like boss tall? <laughs> oh, also, I know I'm doing this without an orthographic. Don't do that. <laughs> um, okay, there we go. Um, this is my method for doing legs and arms. I think it's Cheryl's method. I'm not sure. It was a long time ago. Use nerves? Okay, I'm not about to use nerves. So... Um, I just made a polygon right here. You see in the attribute editor, I can go to polycylinder one and then add subdivisions height. I'm going to add a considerable number, and then I'm going to go ahead and stretch that boy until I get to the roughly leg height, right? Oh, that's what she did. Yeah, we just have a nerve cylinder. Yeah, we do have a nerve cylinder. Okay, yeah. I mean, any any way works, honestly. Um, yeah, I actually have a way to get rid of those. Um, so basically, all you got to do is go bump it up, bump, delete. <laughs> you just leave the top and bottom ones, then you can fix everything else. Yeah. Not the cleanest, but it works. It's it's empty. It's a tube. Yeah. Okay, Um. so this, I don't know, did she use the lattice tool to make the leg? Okay, yeah, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to do half the body. Um, but da-da, surface. Where is it? Deform. Thank you. And then lattice fill shape. I want more, nope, this way. Okay, I'm going to make all that nasty leg shape. This is not the right tool. No, stop it. Lattice points. Huh, <laughs> chunky. You know. Oh, God. Shrink. Slim fast diet. All right. You said that your personal model took you about 65 hours to model? Correct. The face. Really? Yeah. Um, but then we don't need faces. Yep. Um, I can give you, if you guys want me to show you a little bit of the face, I can. I don't want to, I'm not going to tell you anything about modeling it. I'm just going to tell you about what you need for topology if you want that. I don't, I don't want to overstep for Cheryl. But if you guys are curious, I'd be happy to show you. Yeah. Hi, Kai. Oh, well. All right, so this is like a rough like, Um, Do you guys know why this would not be good for rigging? <laughs> not quite. I just fixed your model for this. Yeah. Well, for deformation. For not deformation, the actual orientation of the leg. You see how it's going forward and then back? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not straight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and while it's okay to not be straight, <laughs> we need to have our legs to be <laughs> nice. I was going to say, what are you saying? <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> All right. Um, so, yeah, I use the lattice point, blah, blah, blah. You get a nice little leg shape, right? And this is, again, it's a chunky monkey. It's fine. Um, we'll get back to that momentarily. I know we're talking about when to quad draw. What point in the process do you quad draw, right? Um, Whenever you feel like it. I mean, you're not wrong. I mean, you're not wrong. I, I personally, I do my retopping early because then it's a matter of just moving things around. Because you, when you have proper qual, uh, when you have proper topology, you have proper topology. It's just how it is. Uh, same thing at the front. Very, very dangerous. Don't have a crooked leg. Okay, so this is, I think this is gonna be good to just start a retop with. She, well, actually, she needs boobs. Yeah. All right. No one laugh at my boob method. I'm just saying it right now. Anyone laughs, I'm, I'm leaving the server. Uh. Too late, I'm gone. All right. I'm putting titties on. Calm down. <laughs> All right. Um, so, yeah, you're right. Um, okay, so let's just go ahead and, and one titty. I'm only going to do half the model at a time, guys. We can only afford one boob at a time in this house. Wow. I mean, the secret is do half of it because then you can just flip it. Yeah. But I actually like to I actually like to do my, my rough proportions. Like, for example, usually I'd go ahead and make another leg and check my proportions and stuff. Mm -hmm. Make sure everything's right. Who's laughing at the melon boob? Yeah. I... <laughs> okay. The smile on your face says otherwise. <laughs> okay. Oh, God. And now we all know boobs don't look like this. Boop. 
Have you seen <laughs> anime? All right. All right. Um, and of course, you guys know edit. Uh, delete your history. Blah 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 blah. Oh wait, I don't need to map another boob. I just need one boob right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. So you can. One thing that's concerning here is like I'm going to quad draw this, but they're not touching each other yet. You don't have to combine your meshes first. You can literally just have them be overlapping or touching kind of close, and you'll be good to go. Um, I will explain why momentarily. Something that I do like to do usually is take the torso area, move it down, and then move that so it's ba please. Um, so it's kind of coming in so you can have the crotch area already there. So when you physically model it and you're in quad draw, you're not going to have a random hole between the legs. Um, at what point do you attach the mesh? I'm about to do it via quad draw. Yep. Um, for when you submit this to Cheryl, I believe she wants this mesh all like combined into one, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So after you get your base mesh done, you combine it. But modeling technique-wise, uh, you don't have to until you quad draw. <laughs> I mean, I usually like, this is the point usually when I do quad draw and I do get the shapes going like the way they're supposed to. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of being picky about the leg shape, which I shouldn't be. Okay. Um. No, absolutely not. Never redo. I think that Cheryl told you that I redid Tiffany. Is that correct? Yeah. I did not. I built on that model. I did not. I never restarted. Yeah. Nope. No. I did not. I mean, the thing with quad draw, which is beautiful. And no, awesome, she said no. Um, the thing that is like beautiful, wonderful about quad draw, right, is like Christina was saying, once you have topology in, you can do whatever. Like, and you can always re quad draw. Um, always. <laughs> So, I'm going to go ahead and take this. It's not perfect, but we have something. Her butt's a little low. Bounce that booty. Please. I'm also going to show you guys some really fun tools with Soft Select that will help you out when you're modeling. Mm -hmm. um, so, I'm going to go ahead and retop this really fast. I'm going to go to Mesh. Combine. I wouldn't recommend doing this until you had your arm and area, like torso area. Right? Oh, hold on. Uh, the shoulder area is also really important. Oh, gosh darn it. Boop. Okay. Um, making sure you have, okay, so this is neat. You see this little power button here? It's not very useful for this one, but do you see how this is happening? If you hit the power button, they all move together. Okay, good. I didn't learn that till way later. <laughs> hit the power button if you want to live. Um, moving the shoulders and stuff, it's important to have that kind of before you start your quad draw, because otherwise you might have some problems. Especially since I'm going to talk about the area around the face, which is very important for deformation. Okay. So, that's rough. It's pretty nasty looking, but hey, it's good enough. That's what this program is about. Good enough. Nasty pointy. All right. So, I'm going to go to Mesh, which is up here. Combine. Boom. Now, we're ready to quad draw. Armless lady quad draw. All right. Uh, you guys know to hit the magnet tool? Boom. It is now live, which means it's going to stick to anything you want to do. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and start with the, please, please, mesh tools, quad draw. There we go. I'm going to start with the, the neck area. The neck area should be a circle around where the neck is going to attach to the body. If you do this now, you'll hurt less later. Um, also, same, it's going to wrap over the shoulder, which you can't really see yet because we don't have a shoulder. But it's there in theory. All right. So you see... How that's kind of happening, right? We got a circle. The next, obviously, going to attach to that. It's kind of like the clavicle area. Um, the next thing you want to do is think about where your edges for deformation are going to be, right? So, like hip, you want to make sure your hip deforms properly. What's up, man? I'm showing them some modeling tricks. We're pretending we know what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> um, again, you want to, you know, like where that curve is going to be. That's where that, like a woman's hip, right? Thinking about where that's going to deform, how it's going to deform into the body and the torso, that line. Thinking about all of those things as you model is really important. Um, and I usually start with those major lines of deformation before I do, like, anything else. Um, which helps everything kind of move smoothly. Same for the rib cage, which I'm going to go ahead. Please move. There we go. Kind of pop into here. I think I'm actually, boom, going to be able to connect it right. Ah. I'm going to yeah, connect it right there. It's probably going to be good. Which kind of makes a stomach area, right? Um... And as you can see, I think I'm going to... Where? Oh. Okay, good. Don't say triangle in this household. Triangles actually aren't that bad. Just don't put them where anything is, like, deforming. Cheryl wants none. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so here's another thing. It's like, okay, that's looking pretty good, right? If I hit shift and then drag around, it's going to smooth my topology, which is super useful. It's relaxed, yeah. Specifically, do it with soft select on, because it'll smooth everything, like, 
dynamically on either one. It's not great for boobs, though. No. Boobs, I'm going to warn you. Uh, yeah. Crash! Crash! Do it! I dare you! <laughs> oh, look at it. Listening, it's breathing. Okay. Where is the. I'm going to let it live for a second. Yes. Okay, so because the way your models are right now, this is your very first shape iteration. Um, I would recommend quad drawing as soon as you have your what you like for your first shape. Get that get that topology down because after the topology is down, you can move it wherever you want. And when you put clothes on, you can just put shapes on top of your thing and then quad draw over those, and you know where your edges are. Um, like for example, the model I showed you earlier, the personal model. I'm adding a cloak to that because it's already modeled, and what I'm doing is I'm matching the new topology of the cloak with the body, so I can just. Snap them together and you're done. That's my personal recommendation. Please don't crash. I retopped this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um. How do I? Oh shit! I can save. Wow, that's so generous of Maya. Don't forget to save your files. Oh wait, it works now. All right, great. Um. Any. That was probably exactly what that was. Thanks, Maya. Uh, you can take control and add more divisions into things. Don't add too many divisions until you're ready to, like, go ham. Um, so let's go ahead. The boob, boobs and butt are two areas you might want to use a joint patch for. It depends on how, like, heavily your character, if your character is particularly busty or not. I think Pauline has a joint patch on her boobs. It's just to make sure that deformation works properly. Um, for this one, I am going to go ahead and do what I call the joint patch here, just for uh, demonstration's sake. And those these always start with four on in a location, right? And then from there, you're going to branch out. And this line, this far right corner, directly parallel to that, you're going to put another one. And so you're going to end up with this really cool little joint buddy. That's not good. All right. Um, where? Um, titty. Yeah. <laughs> yes, extremely important. Um, and then you can move that joint patch out further until you get to where you want to go. Please don't do that, Maya. All right. Maya will never know what you want to do when you're retopping. It just doesn't. Ah. So, so like in perspective, um, don't you like have very like your boob? Mm -hmm. Um. Boob. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know when Cheryl from Cheryl's quad drawing with Ben Polio, he had um similar like intersecting geometry. Mm-hmm. Um, and quad draw seems to go right. It. Yes, it How does. Would you suggest then starting from that topology instead and then going outward? Um, I would suggest having your geometry always intersecting. Remember when I put the leg down here and make sure it went through? Because if I quad draw, it's going to try and go into that hole. So you always want to make sure the surfaces are flush with one another. Um, yeah, you can do that, but don't keep that when you're quad. I mean, you probably know this already, but when you're quad drawing. That needs to go away. Um, any kind of clipping. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. This, the quad drawing is a process by which that is meant to disappear. Does the quad drawing just make everything one Yes. It also makes it so... Remember I was talking about deformation and like where stars can go, etc.? Yeah. Do you see how I'm making this hip line? Yeah. That is for deformation later, where it didn't have it before. Oh, okay. Do you have a star there? Uh, yes, I do. But um, okay. I'm probably going to try and hide it. Right now, I'm doing a first pass at shape to get the topology close to where I want it to be. I'm about to make another star right here. You see? Wherever you have two circles intersection, intersecting, i.e. like the thumb and the rest of the hand, or a breast and the rest of the body, or a hip or leg, you're going to have stars. They just occur when two circles meet each other. Yes? Yes, that is extremely useful. Yeah, it depends, like, if it, if it would naturally fold that way, or areas where things wouldn't fold in a particular way, like, for example, when you bend over, right, she's going to bend here and here, like, it's, she's going to bend from this point. So having nothing here, it's probably not going to be that big of a deal. Um, but again, it, it, it be depends on your model and how your character moves and where those things are going to go. It's not necessarily one size fits all. And this is my first pass of the topology, so where I see stars like this, what's your opinion, Kyle? Bad star? Yes. All right. Um, 
But usually a star like this, I personally, and again, I'm not a professional yet, but I don't think this, this star is very big and prominent. I would try and hide it, but if I can't, I don't think, I think it's in an all right spot for deformation. Um, anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and talk about, I'm going to leave the hole for the arm. I'm going to put that there. Um, and as you can see, it's very, this is a way to check your joint flow. I mean, your topology flow. You see how I'm hitting control and then going through this? You don't want things to spiral. Have you guys encountered spirals yet? No. Okay. Thank you, Kyle. <laughs> Basically, a spiral. I'm going to go ahead and make one on the leg just so you can see what it is. Oh, let me show you the most useful thing ever that's going to save you so much time. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. The whole leg. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you a spiral first just so you can see what that looks like. And then I'll show you the useful tool. So I know this seems very obvious. That's what's happening right now. I just made this on purpose. But do you see, if I go ahead and hit control here, it's going to spiral. That is very bad. It's a very bad no-go. What's up? Just crashing again. Sorry. Okay. Uh, oh, God. What? What? Okay. Oh, you should also do this on x-ray mode usually. It's helpful. Uh, that we sh It's going to be shading x-ray so you can see through. Um, anyway. So the thing that's very helpful for legs, and I'm going to go ahead and bring the hips down here so you can see what I'm talking about. Also, if your computer starts to lag while you're quad drawing, delete history on your quad draw. This quad is a draw. Where? Fix it. <laughs> um, this is especially important if you're using ZBrush. How many of you plan on using ZBrush for any part of your modeling process? Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, first of all, just so you know, all the faces for our models and our films were used making ZBrush or Mudbox. Yeah. Um, modeling a face just from straight Maya is extremely difficult. It's possible. Yeah, it's possible. Cheryl will show you how. <laughs> um, all right, let's go ahead and get this leg going. Please. Uh, eh. You see how it's going to try and go into that hole there? I am using soft select. So move some booty. Move that booty. All right. I'm actually not going to connect it to the legs right now because that seems like a problem. I'm just going to show you in the least, the way I know how. Wow, this computer is breathing so hard. It screams at quad draw. Um, have you guys looked up the Flipped Normals YouTube video or YouTube series? Um, Flipped Normals is a YouTube channel that's like uh, industry production guys talking about Maya and different ways to make your life easier. Highly recommend them. There's a specific one that they have for when you're importing your meshes from ZBrush into Maya because they're super dense meshes and they're going to kill your computer. They have a walkthrough of how to prevent lag while doing that. I highly suggest looking that up if you're going to be doing um, ZBrush. Flipped Normals. It's a YouTube series. Sometimes Darlene will walk by your computer and she'll freak out because she's like, Flipped Normals are a bad thing. And we're like, it's a podcast. <laughs> but <laughs> so when you're doing your leg or arm you can take the edge and you can drag it all the way down to the bottom of the leg right and you're like oh that's not my shape at all right fools it will become the shape where is the quad draw tool mesh okay. tools edit mesh mesh tools quad draw boop boop do 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 I just, I just took the edge. I'll go ahead and redo it for you guys. Um, all right, so I made one ring on the leg, right? And then I was like, I want to select the edge. Please don't crash. Stop it. Whoa. Yeah. Um, you take this and you select the edge here. Hit Control, Command E, extrude. Hit the little power button and you're going to be like, I'm going to make some pants. But they're not pants, little do you know. Uh, and then you're going to go back to your quad draw tool, mesh tools, quad draw. And then you're just going to smack this thing with lots of these. If you hold control, control and click down down the leg, it'll add edge loops to it. Yep. Um, it's how a lot of people do it. They work blocky, and then they go from there. Yes. What deformation thing? Oh, yeah, we're going to do that right now. Ready? Uh, usually, I would actually... I You're right on that. I should have done that first and then gone down, rolled around it, and kept going. So I'll go ahead and do that for you. Boop, boop. All right. Bye-bye. Control Z saves lives. You're right. Oh, you can you can increase the cap. Yeah. You could have maximum undos. Don't put it to maximum undos. Put it to 250. You can if you want.
Don't do that though. Not on these computers. You're right. Never mind. Not on these computers. <laughs> <laughs> what computer are you Christina's. Leave me alone. It's because I have a monster at home. Uh, Kyle's as well, and Brandon's. <laughs> yes. If you do a PC build, then typically you'll have enough power to be able to do it. Mesh tools, quad draw. All right, so same thing here. I'm doing the exact same thing. I said that I'm being conscious of uh, where my stuff is going to go. And I actually believe if I go, you see this one thing I can't, it's not connecting, right? If I go in here and then I go ahead and move it any way at all, it goes, it snaps. Mm -hmm. ah. So everything you do is going to move to this. Um, and actually, huh? I just, I selected the, the one that was feathering out and fanning. I selected it and then I moved it and just magnetizes to the next, to the nearest live mesh. Yeah. Which, as we know, is the mesh that I created like two seconds. In, yeah, up there. Um, please work. Boop. All right. And this like, this is going to actually be very nice for deformation. This is always the part that's a little tricky. So I got to make sure the leg <laughs> triangle alarm. <laughs> this would actually benefit from more polys just in general around this area. Um, Do, do, do. Uh, where? Oh, right here? Yes. Uh, I think that usually occurs in, like, topology right there. It's an alright star. I, again, I don't think Cheryl wants any stars from you guys. It, it's, it... She said they're okay, but, um, she wants us, like, to hide them with the Good, yeah. yeah. We're not, like, triangles where she would, like, pop them off like that. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's standard places on the body where stars are just... They're gonna happen. It happens at pole, pole shifts uh, or surface shifts where like planes change direction. There's it's gonna happen. But as long as it isn't somewhere like don't put a star like right here where your mouth and lip are trying to deform. They haven't gotten the face like yet. That, yeah. Bad times. So also this is very you see this like it's it's very low poly. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, add some more. Please don't crash. I. <laughs> Uh, quad draw. There you are. Are you gonna work, buddy? Are you gonna, um, let me go ahead and... Alright, yeah. So this is, this is a whole area where I'd want some more quads. I'm gonna smooth those out for the rest of... Saving a file? Leave me alone. I saved my files. <laughs> And again, when you smooth your geometry, it doesn't do this nice thing, right? Like, oh, it's doing everything perfectly, right? If that's not happening to you, it means you don't have enough divisions. Oh, my. That was crunchy. Oh, whatever. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to take the edge here, boop, boop, and extrude it and move it down, make some pants. Mm -hmm. And just to show Kyle again, I'm going to hit W and move it around. It's going to automatically magnetize to the leg. And then I'm going to pop some more divisions. And, uh, okay, this is another way. I don't have the quad draw tool selected right now, but I do have the edge cut tool. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this ed edge cut tool. It's the same exact thing as quad draw, except it's not as uniform because I didn't do it right. Boop, boop. All right. Mesh tools, quad draw. And I think that that is roughly, like, that's all of the tips and tricks I kind of have for doing this part fast. As you can see, I basically retop this except for connecting the leg to the torso. Can I, okay, yeah, sure. I'll do that. Um... Connecting things, you have to make sure they have the same number of edges. I'm not about. To, I'm not going to check right now, which is a very bad thing to do. Um, I am going to go ahead and assume that needs another one. Um, again, that's a different. This is a, a standard leg topology for. You know how you have the hamstring muscle? I think it's hamstring. Um, that's what this is. Um, I'm betting I'm going to have to take a. I'm going to take an edge loop out of here. Uh -huh, yep. Boom. All right. You just want to make them stick together. I'm gonna. Yeah. Why gone? Whenever it, stick together when it, it it just snaps to it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a good thing and a bad thing. <laughs> yeah. When you want it to happen, it's like yay, and when you don't want it to happen, it's like no. I'm gonna have some problems with this area right here. That's very high poly. Um and. Same with back here. These are both areas that me as a modeler, I'm not advanced enough to just blow through like I have been doing for the rest of these. I'd need some time to uh, check and make sure the topology be nice for deformation in those areas. But this is a pretty nice, on this side right here, 
that's a pretty nice rough go of connecting the leg. The crotch is a whole other animal. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm actually going to have to, let's see if I do this right now. Yeah, Y-Gon right there. I'm, this is a lot of Y-Gons. This is one of those areas I want to come back in and finesse later. Um, please connect where I want you to. <laughs> Please, please. I want this vertice. Oh, you see that vertice is in a hole. Bye bye. It is committed. He's in the abyss. Um, this is a very nasty area. I don't exactly know what's happening there. Uh, again, crotch areas. That's gonna take you some time. The areas that are gonna take you the most time are the crotch and hands and armpits. I would say. Um, I'm not gonna do any of those right now because um, I don't have an arm model. <laughs> And the crotch here I'd need to do more work for than you guys probably care to pay attention to. Um, but that's kind of just the basic tips and tricks for doing a retop. That was very fast. It's gonna And don't expect to go that fast your first time you do this. It takes time to learn. Um, but do you guys have any questions about retopping? Anything that I did here? Anything um, that you're having trouble with is taking a long time and you wish it went faster? Um, can you create holes if you choose to go through Create holes if you choose to go through. What exactly do you mean? Um, again, I know Cheryl taught you nerves because I know Lucy in particular, several of you have had difficulty modeling her because I think the example given was a biped. Um, when you model something like that, I would seriously recommend, um, I'm just going to go ahead and do it really fast with this right here. Making a hole in your mesh is, whoops, oh, it's live. Huh. Fun fact. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Okay, um, modeling bones, it's going to be a very, that's going to be a very tricky model. I would recommend for any kind Especially with deformation, yeah. Well, I mean, they should, it should, it's going to be a set driven, you know, it'd be a good rig to show them Philip, the rock, because it's got all those different meshes that are set driven, if he has it with him. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, you'll see. Yes, yes? Yes. Is it? In meshes? Um... Finding holes in a mesh. I mean, usually you can... What, oh, here's a fun thing. That's actually a really good question. So here's the mesh I've, I've quadrod, right? Quadron. Something that you guys are going to find a lot. I'm going to go ahead and smooth this, right? It looks very nice. It's all together. Interesting thing that happens when you have problems in your mesh. And this is why I recommend modeling on smooth and then flipping back and... I mean, modeling on unsmooth and flipping back and forth. I'm going to go ahead and extrude this one edge which is going to happen more often than you think. And you know, it's going to sit there and I'm not going to move it, right? So it's in my model, but I can't see it. So I'm going to keep going, da, 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 right? I'm going to hit three. You see that right there? That pinch? That means you have, a, you have an extruded edge inside your model that shouldn't be there. That's one hint that you have a problem inside your mesh. Another one, um, another one would be if you have a hole in your mesh, um, and sometimes they can be very small. What happens is it makes a circle. Um, what kind of pinches? Do you have Philip? Okay, I was going to show them, because they have a thing with bones that are exposed. I figured your set different keys on the legs would be great. It's just to this point. Yeah, you want to smack it in the thing? Wait, yes. Set up for on Max here, as well. or... Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, can you save this one first? Yeah. Okay. Bye. Okay, I got this. Let me save this. This is Brandon, by the way. He is the rig master. He's also like top 30 in the world of a beat saber. Uh, 41. 41, sorry, I misspoke. God damn it, Brandon. What happened to top 25? Yeah. Uh, I, I hurt my shoulder, that's yeah. what happened. <laughs> um, okay, where's the video thing? Hello? Thank you, Lauren. I did forget about the assignment due for Darlene tonight. What do I do? <laughs> it's the animation assignment. She got it moved. Yo, we moved our render assignment. We talked to her and she moved it. <laughs>